perfectly right. Because even though this looks confusing, the best thing, guys, a lot of times when I'm looking at something, when I'm trying to evolve, I, I want to be able to see, you know, what can I relate to this that something that reminds me of, of um, something similar that maybe it's a little bit easier. For instance, <laughs> Algebra 1. We talked about the order of operations. The order of operations, parentheses, right? Do what's inside the parentheses first. So inside the parentheses, I have 4 squared. That's going to be like my exponent or my power, right? So therefore, I do 4 squared, which is 16. So then it's 3 times 16. Now I apply 3 times 16, which is 48. Does that make sense? Huh? OK, so we look inside this parenthesis. Can you do anything with 1 half? No. OK, so then we move to the next parenthesis, the sine inverse of 1 half. Can we figure that out? Yes. First of all, let's make sure our angle falls within our domain. Yes, it does. We're good, right? 1 half is between our domain. So therefore, we need to figure out what angle gives us sine of 1 half between 0 or negative pi halves and pi halves. So the first one I notice is 30 degrees. Right? Because the triangle that I wrote up there, the y coordinate is square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. So I am going to use, though, radians. Um, so therefore, I could say theta is pi over 6. Is that the only time sine, though, is equal to 1 half? No, because remember, you could always reflect it over. I only drew the first quadrant, guys, because it's just redundant stuff. If you reflect this over, Right? If you reflect that over the x-axis, what is this coordinate point? The, y, the x is negative, but the y-coordinate is positive. And sine only represents the y-coordinate. Right? If this is pi over 6, then that has to be pi over 6. Right? So if that's pi over 6, then what angle, what does this angle have to be? If halfway around the circle is pi, and this one's a little pi over 6, how far do you need to get? 5 pi over 6. So the other angle is 5 pi over 6. And while you guys are doing these, I would recommend writing down both angles until you really get used to your constraints. Because remember, our constraints of our original angle, of the original sine of x says, the angle constraint of sine of x has to be of what? What does the constraint have to be between? So our angles of sine of x has to be constrained between negative pi halves and pi, half, and pi halves. Does 5 pi over 6 fall within that constraint? No. The easiest way to do that is I just kind of draw this little thing right there. The angle has to fall between these two. So what is my only angle that works? Pi over 6, right? So now I replace sine inverse of 1 half as pi over 6. So I write sine of pi over 6. Still not done. Now, what is the sine of pi over 6? Well, this is what we did before. Again, I'm sorry, it's cosine of pi over 6, right? So cosine of pi over 6, this is what we did in our focus lesson. You find the angle pi over 6. You graph it, right? Or you could just look up there. Where is cosine of pi over 6? Oh, that's that 30, 60, 90 triangle. That's the first one in there. Oh, cosine represents the x coordinate. What is the cosine of your angle pi over 6? And that is your final answer. Work inside out. OK? Does that kind of make sense? No?